The Supreme Court has upheld the victory of Rotimi Akeredolu in the latest governorship election in Ondo State. The majority judgment, delivered by four of the seven-member panel, dismissed the appeal by Itayo Jegede and the People's Democratic Party on the grounds that it was incompetent. The party has released a statement saying it rejoices with the government and people of Ondo State. But the PDP has commended the dissenting judges for agreeing with it that Governor Buni cannot hold two executive positions at the same time. What the three justices held essentially is that by virtue of Section 183 of the, of the Constitution, not just an act, that a person cannot be a governor and also be the chairman of a party, whether caretakership or whatever, at the same time. So it is a wrong, wrong uh, decision for the party to not only breach the Constitution, but to breach its own constitution and then breach the guidelines set for the election. Now, with respect to the decision, the majority decision, all they said essentially was that my Malabuni ought to have been joined as a party. If you cannot join a person against whom you laid no allegation, we made no allegation against my Malabuni. The speakers have not said that uh, a citizen's governor should not preside over the affairs of the party. Don't forget the majority decision stands and not the minority decision. Thank you, sir. Thank so you. Malabuni still remain the Kataka chairman of the party, validly put in there by the party. The Supreme Court has not nullified this position. Those people are very happy and that was evidenced by the large turnout during the election itself on the 10th of October 2020. So, it is the wish of Ondo State people that was demonstrated on that day. Now joining us now to take a look at the merits, substance and possible contestable aspects of this verdict are two top lawyers, Baba Tunde Agala, Ogala, who is a legal advisor to the Interim Management Committee of the Rolling All Progressive Congress, and Kayode Ajulo, who is also a civil rights activist. I want to say thank you for joining us today. And it was almost, we, we saw that the judgment was practically based on technicalities here. And Governor, Governor Akiri Delu smiling all the way and continuing his governance of the state. So talk to us about this. Was it a lapse of judgment on the part of the of the PDP not to join um, Mr. Boney as part as part of the suit here. Let's start it off with Mr. Ogala. Um, thank you very much, but I need to quickly make a correction. I am not the legal advisor of the party. All right. I was a legal advisor and I have left office a year ago. All right. Thank you for that so I'm just correction. I'm now a flight practitioner and senior advocate of Nigeria. Thank you for that correction. And Duly noted. A party man. Um, I won't say that. I made that clarification. So I will speak here as a lawyer. Um, I do not have details of the judgment of the court. Um, what we have so far are slippers. Uh, that we have picked from the media, um, including what I just listened to the counsel to Utah Jagadi and PDP said now, as well as what uh, um, Nia Ketola said also said. Uh, my two brothers still look, I was um, vocal. However, from my understanding of what we've picked here and there, the of the majority seem to have been predicated on the fact that the properties were not before the court. That is for the majority. Um, the Supreme Court, the highest court of the land, has said that the court, the, I mean, sorry, the petitioners in the matter and the appellants at the Supreme Court ought to have joined me, Malabuni, um, ostensibly perhaps a lot of the allegations and this case was largely built around him having been the one who as chairman of the committee signed the nomination of um, 
of Mauritius Miyake Donu. That is what they built the, uh, their case on, and relying on the concern of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as well as the APC Constitution. But like I said, I have not read the full details of the government. I did not read the briefs of the parties in the suit. But my knowledge of the law, too, and based on decided authorities uh, by this same court, has said that you cannot peep into the other house. You cannot go and challenge how a party conducted its affairs, including its primaries, and the process of his nomination. So to that extent, I don't think the PDP even had the locus to have challenged the process that led to the emergence of um, Governor Kredo That has been long decided in a letter of authority in Taraba in 2015 amongst others. So, but in the instant case, the Supreme Court has spoken. It has said you could, you ought to have joined May Malabuni against whom allegations were made and whose action, it was his action as the interim chairman and governor that you predicated your case on okay. that they had violated the constitution of the APC and the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Okay. So Thank I think that is where the Supreme Court, I mean, the majority as it were, which is the court, predicated this decision on. They haven't made such weighty allegations and extensively referred to the man as having no capacity to have sign sign the nomination of Governor Kerry Dodu and present to INEC in the Supreme Court in his wisdom and said, then you ought to have tried. Okay, thank you, Mr. Ogala. Um, I'll take this question to Mr. Kayode Ajulu. Um, since we're dealing in technicalities, let's dissect the technicalities. Should Malai Bumi have been joined? Should he not have been joined? Was it strictly an internal matter? I would like to get your take on that. Well, thank you very much. Um, but let me, before answering your question, let me quickly throw a quote to a word of caution that I won't like a situation where I will use this, your, uh, my answer as more like an appeal, because God forbid that I should constitute myself an appeal to what the Supreme Court has already said. Having said that, one thing that is so clear is this. Yes, the Supreme Court, every day we learn. And I want to believe that Supreme Court they, they revive juries there, they know what they are doing. I've, I haven't made this position that Manaboli and Hutu have been joined. I think one of the things that first came to my mind is how did you want a sitting governor, a chief executive officer, who is protected by the section 308 of the constitution to so be joined? But quickly, I addressed my mind to the decision in, the, in Kaya de Fayemi and Fire Fayoshi, where it has been clear that when it comes to election matter, the chief executive officer of a state, that is, this, the governor of each state, the issue of the, of the immunity we should, should be relaxed. And I think by this decision of yesterday of the Supreme Court, that means that it has widened the scope of when the issue of that immunity has to be relaxed to ensure that justice is done. And as it is, that one today, as because like I said, every day the new laws do come and Supreme Court has such power to make their, each of their pronouncements is like a guide. And as I think and that's what it is. But having said that, and one thing we should, we should know is this. You mentioned the issue of technicalities. I want to believe that technicality is even, even part of electoral petition. Because we are not talking of equity here. Electoral petition, the law that guides this is more of common law. And that is why you see it's so generous. Technicalities are so much to say. And that's why you see somebody like me coming from those states cannot say that I want to contest election and say, look, after all, I'm, a, I'm an indigenous of the state because I have to follow the rules. I have to follow the technicalities. There are some conditions that have to be met. I have to be a member of the party. I have to, I have to ensure that I pass through the, through, through the primary. So I do hear this every time saying that, no, it shouldn't be technicalities. What is technicality? That is the law. So I don't think that should be the problem. And the Supreme Court yesterday has already come down to give a judgment 
that I'm sure will stand the test of time, particularly as it affects our election uh, election petition and out and the procedure. And that, that is what it is. And like I told someone yesterday, the, 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 the plaintiff, that is the petitioner, has even gone ahead to congratulate the winner of the election to say, look, he has put everything behind him. And like the way we used to say as a lawyer, they, 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 we, we, we thank them for this judgment and so be it. And I don't think that controversy, whether it should be joined or should not be joined, should not be. That is the law and that's what it is. Thank you. When you speak of technicality, what people are really saying is, should people get off on something that appears inequitable, something that doesn't follow the mischief of the law. So what is really at stake here is, are people getting off on something that just seems to be a lacuna? Can you maybe address that? No, le no le let's clear one thing. You can, you can, at one hand, accept one issue and at the other hand, have the liberty to, to agree on what not to take. Let me be sincere. Right from the time from the onset, it is so clear that when it comes to election petition, election petition is sui generis. It is something on the class of its own. And that's why I said election petition, it is not an equity, it is not within the realms of equity. It is within the realm of common law. And common law is what it has been. It is what it is. That's why you find out that in electo electoral law, the parties that must be included is well stated. I can't say because I hate the face of Baba Tudi Ogala, or I, I really like his face, his name, he must be joined. I won't say because, maybe because of morality or co. And that is why I don't really want somewhere where we'll be appropriating at one point and reappropriating. We can't say because of technicality. That's why I say even though the contenders, they were there because of technicalities. If not because of technicalities, I or other people, we, we, we say they are their party. So we should not be using, we should not be Peddling this issue of technicality or something indescribable. It is what is used to guide us, and maybe I should not use the word technicalities. Technicality itself is law. It is the law that must be followed. And in a situation where you choose not to follow the law the way it should be, then you are, you are not following at your own peril. So you can't say at the end of the day, now trying to raise the issue that, oh, if not because of technicalities, then I will have gotten this. Then what is the technicalities? It is the law, and it must be followed. It is condition precedence, and this condition precedence must be followed. And this is not the first time in, in, in our trajectory of this alleged issue, even apart from law, apart from election petition, where issue of law technicalities will determine what it is. And mind you, that is what guides the court. So I don't want anybody to say this. We are, this is not issue of morality here. Yeah? This is not, like I said, this is not law of equity. It is common law. It is the way it should be. And that is where we should follow it. Okay, let's take this to our other, other contributor, please. Um, some are saying that the way this ruling has gone, uh, albeit by a divided uh, position, uh, four to three, that it opens up a crisis in the APC as it exposes other people to then contest um, any decision made under the APC chairmanship, saying that he was not a competent, uh, he, he was not competently in that position. What do you say to that, Mr. Ogala? Um, let me quickly say, as a party man and as a lawyer, that the, what the Supreme Court has simply done is a favor and giving APC a hint, what we call Expo, to go back and follow our Constitution as well as the Constitution of the Federal Republic. With that decision of yesterday, any other person that wants to challenge any action that has been taken in the last one year just needs to join Boni. By that decision of the Supreme Court, it means everything May Mama Boni has done in the last one year, including calling meetings of all any organ of the party are null and void because they are illegal. So what should we do? Going forward, May Malabuni should vacate office now. He has to take a decision whether he wants to be party chairman or wants to be a governor. But he has to give up one. And all the actions that he may have taken in the past one year may be voidable too.
Okay, uh, maybe I'll put this question again to you, Mr. Julo. You say we should apply the same principle across board. Um, Mr. Gala said that it was an internal affair, but now he's accepting that the ruling means that May Malabuni should, all his decisions are voidable. Does that seem to, there, does that, there seem to be a discrepancy oh. there? Briefly. Well, it, 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 I think maybe you, may, maybe you seem not to understand him very well. Okay. There are some issues that has to be internal affairs of the party, but the Supreme Court itself has already distinguished this, that in a situation where there is obligation, particularly legal obligation, particularly from the Supreme Court, that is the Fontu Origins, the main law, that is the, the, the fundamental law of the, of, of the land, that obligation has to be met, irrespective of the fact that whether it, it is a party affairs or internal affairs, whatever it call it. And now, let me come to that, the, the second question. I know the Daniel Sikh, Batundi Ogala, a senior advocate of Nigeria, has both said that it's an int. I don't see this as an int. I, say, I can see what the Supreme Court did yesterday, like a warning. It's like a caution that, look, you may escape this by whisker, by the grace of God. I understand Akhil Dulu said, Governor Akhil Dulu said he has been praying, maybe because of the prayer, that next time it, it, won't, be, it won't be a business as usual. It is not more, it is more than the hint. It is more than the caution that are they being that Malabuni is, as, is joining this matter, the story will have been different. And let us ask our question. The provision of the constitution is so clear that before you can come in to explain that, to say you present yourself as a governor of any state, you must have gone to read the constitution and other guidelines. And the supreme guideline here is the constitution. And section 183 of that constitution forbids you, shall not, that is the word, shall not take any office, executive office, or any employment. Now, everybody must have been interpreting this executive office to be another thing, because I understand, I saw the government of my state, that is Lionel Sikh, wrote me a credo, saying, after all, we have the chairman of Governors Forum, we have the chairman of South Governors Forum, we have chairman of Progressive Governors Forum. And we need to get, we need to distinguish what we call the executive office. All this, all this nomenclature, all the position we mentioned earlier, as is director general, the DG, who is the accounting officer, who can be say is the executive office. For you to be a part-time chairman is different. I speak now as a former national secretary of Labour Party. Okay. I know as a fact Thank that you, the sir. two administrative officer, two executive officer. Of that okay. state, of, of that party, happened to be the national secretary and national thank chairman. You, and that is an executive office. What? Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, barristers Ajulo and Ogala, distinguished guests, for giving us your time on Newsday. Mm -hmm.